Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explores. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on or has writing on the back or is ripped and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself or crumpling it or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're going to take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good, or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. This week we're going to continue to explore shadows and if you explored with us last week or in previous weeks you'll notice that we have a slightly different setup this week than we've had in previous weeks. Usually I have the camera pointing uh, above the space and looking down at our making space. This time I've got the camera pointed to the side so that you can see into this uh, fake room that I have built using some uh, cardboard where I painted it white. So it kind of looks like if uh, you were making in um, a room so that we can start exploring shadows together um, in a way that would be similar to your making spaces. Whether that's um, at home, at a friend's house, or even outside in the sun. Lots of different places where you could be making um, and exploring shadows. So this week, our theme is going to be storytelling with shadows. If you've ever stood between a light source and the wall that cast a shadow, chances are you've used your body or you've used an object to um, cast a shadow and move and dance about as if you have a picture that you're manipulating uh, simply by moving. And that's exactly what we're, what we're going to be exploring this week. If you want to just watch as I make in my space, that's totally fine. But if you wanted to make along with me, do you have a light source? So that could be a flashlight, that could be a single lamp, um, that could be a mobile device that you have permission to use. Um, I have an older mobile device here where I can actually turn on um, the flashlight mode and uh, that's what I'm going to be using as my light source uh, as we make today. Move it back just a little bit so you can still see that it's here out of the way. There we go. Great. Um, do you have a dark space to work in? And so it doesn't have to be completely dark. It just has to be a space where the light source, so your lamp or your uh, flashlight or your mobile device, is the strongest light in the space. So you can see here that, so I have, um, I have a ring of light around my camera that is pointed into the space, but the light source that I have here, my mobile device, it's still casting. It's still working to create some kind of light shadows on the back. But if I'm able to turn off my overhead light, then my source of light becomes really strong and I'm able to create really intentional, specific shadows just from that one light. But even before I turned off my light completely, you could still see the shadows. So it doesn't have to be a completely dark space, but a darker space where the light source that you choose um, is more powerful or stronger or brighter um, than any other light in the space. That's why the sun works. Even if you're outside and the sun is lighting all around, um, if it's the strongest light and you're, the, um, and you're standing between um, the light and the ground, it doesn't have to be a dark room for the sun to work, right? It's, it's the light source. So you could absolutely be trying uh, any of these things that we do outside when you can find um, an angle of the sun. You just want to be careful. Make sure you've got some sunscreen on. Um, and that you don't stay out in the direct sunlight for too long because you don't want to you don't want to get a sunburn. The next object I have on my list is any object. There really aren't any rules when it comes to casting shadows, and you don't really have to have any special tools. You can use your hands or your body to cast a shadow. You could go into your recycling bin and grab some ripped paper. I had a, a ripped folded piece of paper that I drew on. I pulled it out of my recycling bin and check it out. It absolutely makes a shadow on the wall. And you can't see any of my scribbles because all that this, uh, this object is doing is blocking the light from going through it. The, the lines on the page aren't actually part of it. So you definitely don't need a fresh, clean, new piece of paper to be able to uh, create a shadow. Any object. I found a couple of other random objects around my space that I'm gonna check out and see how they, how they make a shadow. 
try it out. Anything that you can find in your space, uh, see what kind of shadow it makes. The last thing I put on my sticky here were optional tools. And where I, what I put there was a pair of scissors. And if you've made with me before, you know I love to rip paper. So you absolutely do not need a pair of scissors, but they can be helpful if you have a very specific or sharp space, sharp shadow that you want to create. So the, the sharp lines here, I'm gonna turn this down a bit. See the sharp lines of that cut or folded triangle, folded paper is a very sharp line compared to if I was to rip it, I do have a rip, I have a ripped piece right there. You can see the shadow has kind of this jagged edge to it. And so if you don't want that kind of jagged or rough edge, then a pair of scissors are going to help you get, are going to help you get a, um, a sharper shadow. My light source knocked over there. There we go. And then um, the, uh, the second last thing, that, or the, sorry, the last thing that I put on my list here was tape. And tape can be useful just because as you start putting objects together or you start putting objects out into the space, you might want to combine things that don't want to stick in place. For me, that's going to be really important because I have kind of a smaller making space here. But if you have a larger room, you're, you might be able to balance some things together better than me. So I did grab um, some tape to be able to stick some things together, but this is totally optional. Remember, you could do all of this with just a flashlight and your body. Okay. I'm gonna move my stickies to the side so we have a bit more making room. And before we start actually building our story, because we've got to think about what we want our story to be, I'm just going to um, see what kind of shapes I can make with the objects that I found around my space. So I'm gonna turn down my overhead light all the way and just use my, my flashlight light source and my sandwich board Ooh, as I turn it in different directions. Hey, cool. I'm able to get shapes. So I don't even have to go looking for anything. I really like those shapes there. I have my little, my little host paper towel uh, roll character here, creating these really interesting rectangular spaces on the wall or maybe um, a large building, or just a blackout space, a space that is dark so that I can use the, the dark space and the light space. That's cool. I found um, a D-cell battery, a big thick battery. And I was curious because it's kind of the same shape as my paper towel tube character here. But do you see the difference? This battery has this really interesting nub shape to the top of it that this one doesn't. So maybe that would be just enough of a difference uh, based on the story or the objects that I want cast up on the wall. What if I want them to be the same size? Well, now they're the same height. This one's way thicker than the other. That's how, I don't, I don't know if it's possible. I don't think I will be able to get it to be exactly the same size or width. But when, oh, wait, wait, oh, a little bit closer. No, not quite, almost though. So by moving the space, the shapes uh, back and forth closer or further to the light, I'm able to change the shape and the size of the different objects. I found two more things. Oh, and I'm actually really happy with how interesting my paperclip looks. So I've got these two kind of bunny ears happening, but also the circles where the light is coming through. And so depending on how I place it, I'm able to use different parts of the, of the object to to change my form that is cast up on the wall. Make it a bit bigger here. There we go. Could it be a bat? 
So this is the, or sorry, a pterodactyl, the beak over here, and the, the eyes, and then the wrapped, the wrapped wings, maybe. What about, oh my salt shaker? Yeah. I chose this one because it has the transparent um, base to it, and I wanted to see how the light was going to tra travel through it. So even though it's transparent in that, that you can see, excuse me, you can see through the salt shaker, the light is hitting it in such an interesting way. So as it still casts a shadow that is kind of cool, it's acting more translucent where it bends and, and lets some light through, but not all light through. What if I wanted this to be my, oh, <laughs> knock over my light. What if I wanted this to be my background? Now I don't have to draw a background. I still got, oh, sorry. I keep kicking the, the power cord to my light. There we go. So now that's my background. If I move these shapes around, you can still see them in the background. So now, sorry, in the foreground. And so now I can build this story in front of this really cool background. I can also move it. So what if my story required there to be some kind of movement? Maybe there's lights up ahead or maybe there's a storm. Doesn't it kind of look like there's rain falling when I move it like this, like a thunderstorm? Check out where the light hits the glass right here. It kind of looks like lightning. I wouldn't know that until I tried putting the light oof, <laughs> through my object. This might be a place, actually, you know what? I am going to use it. So this is a place where I'm going to use some tape on my tool to help me out here. And you might not need that. Your, um, your light source, if you have a lamp, might sit up really well. Or if you have a flashlight that you can just lay on its side. But because I have a mobile device and I'm trying to get it to sit up on its thin side, it keeps wanting to fall back. And so I'm going to use a bit of tape help it stay in place. We'll see if that works. And if not, I'll just keep fixing it. No problem. Just exploring. I'm going to leave this there. Really like this. So for my story, I think I am going to make it on a rainy day, a stormy day. Oh, there. <laughs> it really wants to, really wants to fall over. Okay. I'm going to sit in front of something else. You know what? I'm not going to use my D cell battery. I'm going to put that behind my light source so that it stays in place. There we go. Okay. What did you find? What did you notice about the shadows that the various objects that you found cast? Did you find a shape you weren't expecting? I really wasn't expecting this, this cool triangle from my sandwich board. And so you could do this the same by just having a piece of paper that you fold in half. So you go into your recycling bin, find a piece of paper, fold it in half, move this, this piece over here, right? And just fold it in half. And now you can make yourself um, a triangle too. So I'm going to use my sandwich board because I've got that here. But um, yeah, go into the recycling bin and see what you can, you can find in there. What about plastic lids or bottles? or jars, or jugs. What kind of shadows do they cast? Cool. Okay, remember before how I said if you wanted to have shapes, but that you didn't, you, you didn't have any ready-mades, or you didn't have any objects for casting the specific kind of shape that you wanted. I think I want a tree. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of paper that I found and I'm going to use my scissors. I'm gonna turn my voice off for a second and I'm going to make some shapes using my piece of paper so that I can add to shadows for my story.
okay. So I decided because it's raining outside in my scene, right, my salt shaker glass made this interesting background. I've decided because it's outside, because uh, I'm on Coast Salish territory where there is a lot of really cool and beautiful trees, it's important for me if I'm going to be setting up the scene here that I would have some trees. And so I cut out some really quick shapes here. I don't know if they're going to work. They're really big. That's okay. Hmm. I think I actually want to make them smaller. So I'm going to try again. That would be a good height. More like that, I think. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to move all these pieces over. I'll use those again if I want to later. I can use that paper. But that's the, that's the height that I actually want. And so you know what? I'm not even going to get that complicated this time. I think I'm just going to cut out some uh, triangle shapes. I might end up looking a bit like mountains. I'm okay with that as well. A lot of mountains on uh, the Coast Salish territory. Or across, across Coast Salish territory. Okay. Maybe I made the, made it too short. Well, let's see. I got a box here. I'll put it up in the box. Let's see if I can get it to sit a little higher. Okay. Yeah, that's more like what I want. Okay, I'm going to stick it to the side of the box here because I ended up making it a little a little shorter than I wanted it to. That's okay because I've got the tape and I've got lots of other paper. I could have re. I could recut it, but I got this box. I'm going to see, see if I can use the box. All right. Kind of mountains. This kind of looks more like, you know what? I'm going to change it. I'm going to make that a campfire. And all of a sudden, I'm going to make this a tent. There we go. Yeah, all right. And now, instead of rain, now I'm going to pretend like I can see kind of these like foresty area in the background. Because why not? I get to decide what I see with these shadows. I could also take this away. No problem. Cool. Let me bring my, my mountains back over here again. Mm, no, I ended up not liking those very much. I, I, think, I think I do like the whole idea of a campfire. Move that really close over there. big, my big tent. Great. So if I wanted to, I wanted to bring some trees back into this. I could, I could cut some of these larger shapes over here. We kind of get to play, right? There is no, there is no right or one way to make a shadow. And so a way that you come up with is it might be very different from somebody else who you're making with. That's why it can be really fun um, to do this with a friend or another person. And, uh, and then you get to tell each other the story. Uh, might be too short again. I feel like it needs to be like up here. That's cool. Do I have another piece I could stick it to? Yeah. There. Can I have a piece of tape? And it doesn't have to look like the, the piece that I'm making here doesn't have to look good because nobody's going to be looking at what casts the shadow. They're going to be looking at the shadow itself. So it, it can end up being like a really weird or even ugly shape that you make um, for the thing that casts the shadow. That's fine. Because all that matters is how the light hits it and adds to the scene. There we go. Now it's tall enough. Right? So now I've got this 
uh, craggly tree to the side because it's been a really hot couple of weeks. That's probably how it looks right now. There you go. Now I got a tree. I can move it and shift it depending on the way I want the light to hit it. There we go. Okay. So I've kind of set up my tree. Oh, my tree is sagging. <laughs> That's something else you could do with storytelling. If you wanted something to move slowly over the scene, what could you do? What kind of uh, material could you use to make it sag slowly over, over the scene? Maybe you want to show an ice cream cone melting. There we go. Here's my tree. So can you see, even though I'm trying to cast my shadow on this back wall, like it's a, like it's a TV frame, like a TV screen, I've got my objects placed in very different spaces around the room. So even though this tree is off to the right, it's behind the box. In fact, it's kind of in the middle of the box, but where the light is shining it, causes the, um, the tree to actually be cast over to the side. So you get to play around with where you want to position things so that it ends up doing um, and showing the way you want it to show. I think I like, I, think I like the idea of the fire being closer. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, so now I have my campground scene. I could pull my little toilet paper tube in here, but even though we know that I've drawn a character on here, in the shadows, it looks kind of boring. It just looks like a rectangle. Kind of looks actually like maybe a garbage bin, <laughs> right? Which is important at a campground. So if I put that right there, it kind of looks like there's just a garbage bin. Instead, it actually might be more interesting, yeah, to bring in my uh, clothes pegs because they do they kind of they kind of have uh, maybe bunny creatures maybe they're they're bunny animal or cat people maybe they're aliens or maybe we just pretend we pretend that they're kind of like humans because they're standing there um, around the fire what kind of story could we tell now that we've built our scene around this campground. We could sing a song of these, of these uh, creatures around, around the campfire. They could be arguing about what they want to eat for dinner. They could be saying, um, they could be telling their own story around the campfire. They could be saying nice things to each other before they decide to turn in and go to sleep. you get to decide. And based on the different things that you bring into your scene, whether you make them, whether you find them, or whether you decide to put them together and build something out of the various objects you find. <laughs> oh no, the fire got really close. Okay, move it over there. All right, so by combining objects together, you also can add to your story. Don't forget to rotate objects as well. Really look at objects on all angles and see what kind of shapes woof, you can find by moving them around. Oh, I actually like this better. It ends up looking like um, the metal are some arms around these, so they, they look more human now. Oh, I like that, maybe this person decided to stay up around the campfire before, uh, before everybody else fell asleep. Having one last marshmallow. There we go. Oh, they're kind of standing in the fire, I don't want that. There we go. And they fell asleep. <laughs> you get to decide the story. You're the storyteller. You get to craft the scene. You get to cast the actors. 
you really can do whatever you want with, uh, with making shadows, which means that your ability to tell stories is really infinite and wide and open. There are lots of different ways that you can play with shadows to make stories. And I've just explored a few. I'm gonna leave my camera running like I do every week while I clean up because we wanna practice respect by cleaning up our space when we're all done exploring. You can check out last week's episode of Shadows by checking out our Facebook page, our YouTube page, or artstarts.com slash explores dash online. We're gonna be exploring shadows one more time next week. And I hope to see you then. Bye for now.